<clears throat> um, hello everybody and welcome to another live English class. Um, I'm Christian and this is Kangaroo English. Um, <clears throat> I'm really, I'm not feeling very well today. Um, I have a fever and a really sore throat and I have swollen, swollen glands and um, headache, everything. <laughs> and, and because I'm a man, the pain is 20 times more intense than for a woman. <laughs> because, you know, um, men, men are very pathetic. And um, <laughs> if, if, if men had to experience childbirth, if, if men had to be responsible for having babies, there would be no children on, on planet Earth. <laughs> um, so today, it, it's, um, it's the 15th of August. It's, it's a public holiday here today. Um, yeah, a public holiday. So everybody is relaxing uh, at home, maybe, I don't know what they're doing, probably having some beers and relaxing, but I'm here with you guys and uh, today we're going to have, we're going to have some fun today, uh, I think. Um, <laughs> I, I hope that all of you are well. It is a, it is a spectacular day here today. Um, it's, it's very hot outside and um, uh, the, there's no clouds in the sky, a beautiful blue sky. Um, it's, it, it's a great day to be, um, to be inside. <laughs> yes, it's true, Mariam. Men, men are, men are really pathetic. So, um, hello to Patricia from France, Natalia Cordova. Um, <laughs> thanks guys, <laughs> uh, for sending your, 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 your wishes, uh, to get well soon. Um, Kansas, Sahel, Mohammed, um, uh, Sunil Maratha in, from India, um, Meiki Wong, I don't know where you're from, but Meiki Wong, um, uh, someone here called Our English Club says that it's 40 degrees, but, but where are you? Because I don't know where you are in the, in the world. Um, Kansa is from Syria, but living in Qatar, I imagine it's very hot today. Um, yeah, so Natalia is, Natalia is Colombian, living in Sydney. Hello, Lepka. <laughs> Morelio, Ginu, Mayela, um, Carol. Wow, lots of people in here today. It's, um, it's, it's great to have you all here. Um, and Dan from Mexico. Hello, Dan. <laughs> actually, I don't, I don't actually know why it's a public holiday here today. Um, I really don't know why. I should probably know. I should probably know. <laughs> um, hello, Venci, my favorite Russian gangster. <laughs> and good, Mayela says it's um, good weather in Venezuela. Nice, nice. Well, um, I have a couple of different activities for us to, for us to do today. But um, I, I thought that we would start, we will just start warming up. We'll warm up with some, with some vocabulary. Okay, so... Um, let me get my, my thing here, okay. So, okay, <clears throat> um, we're going to play, uh, we're going to play a game. Ah, oh, also I forgot to say that, that last week, last week I did a live class, but there was a technical problem and the class was deleted, so, yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, uh, okay, so um, also one more thing I want to say. If, if, if you are not in the Facebook group or if you are not connected with me on Instagram, then please join the Facebook group, follow me on Instagram, and there's lots of extra things, okay? Lots of, lots of new and interesting things about English every day. <laughs> uh, okay, <clears throat> so we're going to play a game called Sort It Out. And actually, 
we played this last week uh, and we're going to play uh, for a little while. We're going to play for a little bit again. Uh, again. Um, <laughs> so, um, the first thing is quantity. How many are there? And we want to go from, from the most to the least. Okay? So, basically in this game, you have to put the things in order. It's really simple. Okay? So, how many, how many of, of these things? Which, which has the most and which has the least? Okay? So, the first one is legs on an insect. Legs on an insect. How, how many legs does an insect have? The second one is colours in the rainbow. Colours in a rainbow. How many colours are there in a rainbow? I don't, I don't want you to, to cheat, okay? I don't want you to use Google. Uh, the next one is how many seats are in a Ford Expedition. So a Ford Expedition is like a type of, um, it's like a type of four-wheel drive vehicle, okay? Uh, the next one is, how many character tiles in Mahjong? Ma. Um, do you know the game um, Mahjong? It's a Chinese board game. Do you know this? Um, do you know this game? Well, how many how many character tiles are in this game? And finally, how many players in a basketball team? So, there we go guys, uh, legs on an insect, colours on, colours in a rainbow, seats in a Ford Expedition, tiles in Mahjong and players in a basketball team. So, which one has the most and which one has the least? Mm. So I can see that you're taking some guesses here, six legs on an insect, seven colours in a rainbow. Uh, but you're not sure. <laughs> um, uh, ten, 10 plays in a basketball team? I'm not sure. So, are you ready to find out the answer? <laughs> okay, so. Okay, the first one, the, the largest quantity is tiles in Mahjong. There are nine, nine tiles in Mahjong. So this is number one. Uh, the next one is how many seats in a Ford Expedition? There's eight. That's number two. Uh, colors in a rainbow? Seven. Seven colors. And finally, six legs. Six legs on an insect. And five players in a basketball team. <laughs> I... I didn't realize that insects had six legs. I thought that, you know, the world of insects was really big. You know, I thought that there were thousands of different types of insects. And some insects had, you know, eight legs and four legs and two legs. Uh, and maybe a, cent is a, a centipede is an insect, you know? A centipede has a hundred legs. This, this is not right. Six legs? What, what are they talking about? It's not right. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, um, let's let's do the next one. Um, <clears throat> Now, this one really is, is a little bit strange, okay? And this is, how many teeth, how many teeth do these animals have? Okay. How many teeth? Wow. So, uh, from, from most teeth to least teeth, okay? So, the first animal is a rabbit. I think everybody, everybody knows what a rabbit is, no? <laughs> that's my, that's my rabbit impression. It's pretty good, huh? that's pretty good. The next one is a gopher. Now, honestly, this animal, I have to say, is not a very common animal, a gopher, okay? So, probably you will have to Google this animal to, to understand what it is. It's, uh, I, think, I think mainly they live in America, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Okay, next one is elephant. Elephant. <laughs> okay. Then a dog. A dog. And finally, the bottle nose dolphin. So you know that there are there are various different types of dolphins. And the bottlenose dolphin has the the big <laughs> the big thing. Uh, and I, like when I when I visualize this animal, the bottlenose dolphin, I think um, I think about like hundreds of teeth. I think it has hundreds. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look what you guys think here. So. Um, 18 teeth, but I don't know what, 16 teeth, but which animal? A gopher. A gopher is a ground squirrel. I mean, it's similar to a squirrel. It's sort of like small and it has, you know, big teeth. And I don't know what it eats. I don't know where it lives. I don't know anything about a gopher. <laughs> um... um <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Rabbit, please open your mouth so I can see how many teeth you have. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look, guys. How many teeth? Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Look at this. Can you see this? The, the bottlenose dolphin has between 76 and 98 teeth. It has like 100 teeth. Incredible. Bottlenose dolphin, number one. Uh, here. Okay. Number two, surprising to me, is the dog. Look. A dog has 42 teeth. I, I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, a rabbit. A rabbit has 28 teeth. Well, I didn't know that either. 28 teeth in a row. I thought... The rabbit has two, you know? Them. Elephant has 24 teeth. And finally, the little gopher, the poor gopher only has 20 teeth. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Let's do one more, guys. And then we can start to talk about... Um, some other some other things that I have planned, okay? So <clears throat> um, uh, well well um, okay this is actually this this one is really good for your vocabulary, okay? So basically for those people who are just joining, we are playing a game we're playing a game where you have to you have to put things in order 
Okay. So, um, now, basically, I want you to tell me which, which wind is the strongest. Which one is the strongest, okay? So... The strongest wind. Okay, here we go. The first one is a light breeze. I think maybe a clue here, you know, light, a light breeze. Okay, the next one is light air. Light air. The next one is calm. <laughs> no, no tornadoes. <laughs> calm. <laughs> the next one is a strong gale. A strong gale. And finally, a fresh breeze. So, which one of these, which one of these is the strongest? A light breeze, light air, calm, a strong gale, and a fresh breeze. Wow, so Dennis C. is super confident about this. He says, three, one, two, five, four. Three, one, two, five, four. Three, one, two, five, four. I don't know, I think... Okay, so let me let me let me tell you. So calm, calm is the softest. Okay? Calm is the softest, which is one kilometer per hour. So very soft. Uh, the next one is light air. Light air. So this is between one and five kilometers per hour. Uh, then you have a breeze between 6 and 11. <clears throat> a fresh breeze between 29 and 38. Whoa. And finally, a gale. A gale is from 75 to 78 kilometers an hour. Now, these, these words... You will definitely find these words used by, by native English speakers every day. So people say that, um, you know, today there's a, a breeze or um, there's, there's a gale. Yes, and Polusio says you can have a stiff gale or a hard gale. So it's basically strong wind, really strong wind. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, apparently they have apparently they have specific specific wind speeds. I didn't know either. I had no idea. Uh, okay, so um, for for the next part of this class, I want you to imagine that you are. Vi going to visit, you're going to visit England in 2066, okay? So in, in 50 years from now, okay? And you, you want to, to, to speak with, you know, to speak with pronunciation so that as many people as possible understand you. And, and also, you want to be able to understand the people, Okay? Now, there was, there is, uh, a specialist, a specialist in English pronunciation, okay? And he wrote, he wrote a, a paper to say what English would sound like in 50 years, okay? How, how would English change in 50 years? And I thought that we could talk about it because... <laughs> Because some of, the, some of the things that are going to change, 
okay, um, will affect how, how you speak in the next 10 years, okay? And some of the things that are going to change will actually make it a lot easier for you to speak English, okay? Uh, pronunci with, regarding pronunciation, okay? So the, the first thing that's going to change, okay, is in, in a majority in the south of England, okay, in a majority of accents now, they, most people do not pronounce the H, okay? So, for example, um, if, if you have a word like hotel, okay, um, and, you know, a, a correct, <laughs> correct, uh, uh, a standard British pronunciation would, would tell you that you have to, <sighs> okay? So, really, hotel, hotel and and i know that, that 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 is really uncomfortable and strange for a lot of um people okay and but but in in a majority of places in england the h they don't pronounce the h they say hotel okay so the h has disappeared but the the prediction the prediction of this guy is that the h will 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 come back okay so, depending on what language you speak now, it could be easier or more difficult for you, okay? So, when, when you hear people saying hotel or um, helicopter, in, in the future this, this H will come back. So, you should really concentrate on, <sighs> okay, it's a, it's a question of, of producing air. Okay, so um, uh, the next thing, the next thing, which I think is is very good for you guys, okay, is is that with this and that, the th. The horrible th in English that everybody hates because you have to mm, you have to stick out your tongue. It's probable that this th is going to disappear. In the future, you won't have to go this and that. You can use a t or a d. Okay, you can say this or that or this or that. And this, this is a result of, of so much immigration in, in the British Isles. And when you have a lot of immigration, you have people, you know, you have people who it's very difficult for them to pronounce the sounds of English. And so English changes. So if you hate the TH, if you hate the th, then... Congratulations, because in, in the future it will, um, it will disappear. And <laughs> as, as Eternal Youth says, if you're Russian, it's this and that. <laughs> which, which will probably be, which will be fine in the future. <laughs> um, okay. Now, um, the next thing is also maybe is good for you. Okay. What, what example word did they put here? Um, okay. um, or, um, so, this is regarding the, the, the vowel U, okay? So, in, in a majority of, of English words, the, the the sound the sound of the u is like eu eu it's a, it's a it's it has two it's a diphthong we have the mouth movement cute and e university and this 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 can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people you know you have this movement and you know when to use it when not um, 
but in the future this this sound will change into only ooh okay so so for example um, this the pronunciation of this word might be coot coot and the pronunciation of this would be university so if you if you have problems with this with this eu sound then then no problems in in the future you can you can ignore this and in in some dialects in english now um, in towards the the top of english it people already talk like this um, so so yeah okay next one the next one is uh, Now, if, if you are uh, somebody who speaks uh, uh, a Southeast Asian language, okay, then, then the R is your, is your mortal enemy, okay? The R is very difficult to, to pronounce. It's because this, this doesn't exist in, 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 in these languages, okay? And you make the R by bringing your tongue back and R. And like like a pirate, R. Okay, but probably in the future this this R is going to disappear, and it's going to sound more like a W. Okay. okay. So there will be no difference between a red and a wed, a wed, and and really um, the main difference is the position of your tongue, and and again. This is this is um, a, because of immigration, because of the influence of other languages on English. So, red will become led, led. <laughs> so yes, Rani, the red devils will become the wed devils, which is actually easier to pronounce because you just go whoa, 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 rather than with your er. It's, it's faster. It's faster. Uh, okay. Oops. Um, the next one is, and if, if you watched my class about Australian English, then in this class I talked about the dark L. Okay. So the dark L is when we do not pronounce the L because it 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 it's it's physically complicated because you have to you have to bring up your tongue uh, you have to make make contact um, make contact with the top of your of your mouth and. Um, it's, 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 it's physically, it's, it's a lot of work. So some people, um, a lot of, especially Australians and some other dialects, they replace the L with like a, a dark L. So the contact, the contact between the top disappears. So pool becomes pool, pool. So the tongue, the tongue doesn't come up to make Contact. So yes, it does sound a little bit like poo. <laughs> There's a little bit of a difference between um, the mouth position of poo, which is very small here, ooh, and ooh, which is it's more forward as well. Ooh, okay. So yes, for for example, the word cool, the word cool will become cool. So it's just a question of we don't. We're too lazy to touch to touch the top of our mouths with our tongue. Too lazy. <laughs> um, so yes, in the future, lots of dark L's. Uh, okay, and finally, finally, glottal stop, glottal stop. Um, so. <laughs> 
if we um, or uh, what's another one? Uh, Now, um, again, again, the, 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 in, in English, the T, the T, the T is a physically, it's hard work to pronounce the T, okay? Because you have to have an explosion of air, T, T, okay? And so it's, it's easier when you're speaking to not, to not do the T. It's easier to just have a... It's called a glottal stop, where basically we, we completely stop the air. So this would be ba, and this would be wait. So the sound just disappears, okay? And, and again, probably this in the future, okay? This type of pronunciation, like wait, will, will, be, the, um, will be the standard pronunciation, okay? So yeah, they... These, that is all of the predictions of, of this guy for, for what English might sound like in 50 years. So I thought it was quite interesting. And I think it shows that, um, you know, language is not static. You know, language is always changing and evolving. And, you know, sometimes you have to accept that language is changing and evolving and you know people who people who are very narrow-minded who are only um, willing to like to say language it should be pronounced like this and, and that's it you know these people are not they're not going to have a good time in the future because you cannot stop things from changing especially with languages so um, okay Okay, um, another thing, okay, uh, now I thought that, I thought that we would quickly look at, um, at pronunciation in, in connected speech, okay, so if, if I write, if I write a sentence on the board, I want you to tell me which letter which sound disappears, okay? So here, here is the first sentence, okay? A hot pizza. So when a native speaker is speaking quickly with connected speech, which, which sound here would, would disappear? Okay, so Fabio and Mango, it is not the H. No, it's not the H. The H would not disappear. Very good, guys. Very good. So, yes. Uh, Rani, Lenny, Natalia, Zuzia, Eileen. Um, exactly. It would be the T. Very good. Okay. So, if you, if you heard a native speaker talking, okay, then in connected speech they would say a hot pizza, a hot pizza, because again we we when we're speaking fast, okay, we eliminate sounds that are physically difficult. Hot t pizza. We have to have a stop. Hot t pizza because the T is um, an, an explosion. Okay, so yes, hot pizza. Very good, very good. Okay, what about this one? Now what, in, in this sentence here, there is, uh, there is, something is going to change with the sound, something is going to be different. Who can, who can tell me what that might be? Who can tell me why, how this will change? The G... No, not the G, and no, not the L, no, no. Okay, no, that's not the N, changes the L without the V, no, it's not that either. 
the elimination of N. Very good. Very good, guys. So here, okay, seven languages. Seven languages. Okay, because, because again, to transition, to transition from N to L, physically it's very, it's very complicated. Seven, because we have to stop seven languages. Okay, but another one, okay, with, with, with N, um, uh, where is it? Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, there you are, okay. So what about this one, okay? This is going to be something, again, it's going to be something different, okay? So the N, the N will not disappear. What, what will happen to the end? To the N? Um, no, it's not. So we keep the P and we keep the N and we, no, it's not. Uh, so, Inácio Metal, can I understand Portuguese like the Portuguese can understand Spanish? Um, me, no. Um, people, people here from, from, from Galicia can understand Portuguese because Portuguese and Galician are very similar languages. But probably someone from the south of Spain who has no contact with Portugal would not understand Portuguese. Maybe a little bit. A few words, but not not a lot. Okay. So, what we what we have to do to understand what what happens here, okay, is we have to think about the mouth position. Okay. So, the mouth position for for here, p, we have the mouth closed. Okay, people, people. So. But the N, the N, the mouth is open and the tongue is up. Mm. So we have this really big transition between N, P, which, which is physically difficult. So what happens is the N transforms, transforms into an M because an M, the mouth is closed, right? So... If you listen, people will be like, seven people, seven people. And if you watch, you know, you can see the mouth is closed. And because the sound, the sound is approximately the same. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. It is a question of laziness, a question of efficiency. We, when we speak, we want to speak as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible. Um, okay, so let's look at another one. Um, um, I'm just, I want to choose, so. Now, we just, we just talked about about a transformation. So what is your prediction for, for this here? What is your prediction for this? Think, think about the mouth, think about the mouth position for B, for beard. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Eternal youth and I don't know your name, I'm sorry. But the N becomes M, exactly. Because, because beard, okay, beard, look, we have our mouth closed. Beard, okay, beard. And the N would be mouth open. Mm. So we have to eliminate the N and it would be brown beard. Brown beard. Okay, very nice, very nice. So what about... Um, uh, Um, uh, 
Um, which one should we do now? What about this one? What about this one, guys? Uh, short way. How would that sound in, in connected speech? What, what, what would happen here? Very nice. Very nice, guys. Excellent. We're going to eliminate, we're going to eliminate that T because, because again, when we have, when we have that explosive sound, the T, we have to stop speaking. We have to stop speaking to make the T. So we eliminate the T, a sure way. <laughs> now you could call it laziness or you could call it efficiency. It depends on your perspective. <laughs> um. Okay, very good. So this, this, this is just, um, you know, a very short, um, <laughs> a very short lesson about, about connected speech, you know, and it, it's like, like with, with any skill, you know, the more time, the more time you spend listening, uh, the more time you dedicate to, to really listening actively to listening with your with your brain you know really understanding you know why do we say this and this um, this will help you to um, to to understand English better okay um, so okay well listen guys as I said as I said at the beginning of the class I'm really not feeling very well <laughs> um, and so I'm going to finish this class a little bit early today, I'm sorry. Um, but I have a special surprise for all of you coming very soon um, and I, I, I think you'll like it. Uh, so yes, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, I really hope to see you on Facebook. Um, on Instagram, you know, connect with me so that we can, um, so that we can, we can practice English together and express ourselves. Um, and now I'm going to go to bed. Um, but thank you all very much for watching. Uh, yes, please, please don't forget this week to, to express yourself and I will see you. I will see you again very soon. Okay. Bye guys.